Thank you, Father Lord. Father, we ask that you preside over this discussion. Let everything we say, everything we do, bring praise and glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. There are a lot of disjointed things, different things I want us to discuss today. One is actually more in line with practical Christianity than with the Bible study. It has to do with, um, I, I phoned EMC um, two days ago concerning my article of faith. Uh, I spoke to the chairman of Vanguard and told him that he hasn't paid me in a long time. So I want you to advertise my book and deduct it from the money you owe me. I want you to carry a book review. I sent him a book review by Martins. It was very well written. Better written than a lot of the articles that I see in Baghdad. Every time I phone him, he says, ah, Femi, Femi, you know, we will we'll deal with it next week. Next week, you know, I waited. So I got tired of it and I said, okay, I'm going to approach them now from a different point of view entirely. So last Saturday, I did not send in any article of faith. And this week, I have written to them that they owe me like 6 million naira for just articles of faith, not even talking about the secular articles, which they hadn't paid me. And I said, Miss, you have to pay. Um, <clears throat> But there are a number of things that arose, you know, one, initially I was suspicious because when I took that decision, first thing that happened was that they did not leave a gap in my space. They simply put an old article of mine and put it there. Two, a day or two after that, I got a phone call from an anonymous phone call from somebody. They said, you don't know me. I just want to tell you that your article of faith has been a great blessing to my life, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. That was it. And I thought, that was this man sent by the Vanguard people <laughs> so as to sort of discourage me from uh, uh, the action that I was taking? And then I got another letter from a man uh, who said he's been reading my article of faith for 20 years, even though I have not been writing for 20, I've not been writing up to 20 years. He says he's been reading my articles of faith for 20 years. And he sent me 250,000 Naira. So my question is, Am I taking the right decision, deciding not to write for these people again because they they didn't they have not paid me in, in, in eight years and would not even just publish a book review? What do you guys think? But it looks like your system is not is not is not well. Yeah, can you can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 So I'm saying that the first thing is that you should not stop writing. Because we believe that uh, according to what we understand and then is that every step on the way, God is behind it. You know, God is behind it for them to delay the payment. 
I, I, I believe that it's God. Then one, then the article, your article of faith is not the one that determines whatever they pay you. It is God that determines. Because uh, according to the way it is, we we cannot, uh, we are not asking God for wages. You know, so what whatever we do, God determines whatever is going to pay us. So they are not even the one paying, it's God. So when you continue writing, you're not expecting from them, even though you've already written to them that they have to do, you know. Let, so let, just continue. Let, let, me, let me put it this way. Uh, God is a God of covenant. Okay. So when I joined uh, Vanguard, I was writing for Next, and they were paying me 20,000 naira per article. Vanguard said they will pay me 10. I said, you can't pay me 10. You know, I mean, I can't, I can't be demoted. They pleaded, pleaded, pleaded. After three months, I went back to them. You have to pay me 20. We ended up and agreed that they would pay me uh, 15,000 naira per article. That is, that was 11 years ago. Uh, just 15,000 naira per article, which is a pattern. So, it was an agreement. Uh, now, sometimes they pay, but you know, I mean, they, they, they get a lot. When I ask them, uh, they will, if they owe 1 million, they will give you 150,000. And the thing just keeps increasing. Then by the time it got to 2016, I was tired of asking them and they just, they were just not paying again. So it was an agreement that we made. Now, what annoyed me was that I then phoned the man who always is he's my friend. He's come all the way from Bangar to see me several times. He even came to Healing Wings. He attended one of our services once uh, to print, to, to publish a book with you. I don't know what the big deal is. It means that they are taking me for granted. I know so many people buy Vanguard on Sunday because of my article of faith. I know that. I had wanted to stop before, but they told me that. Look, his parents in the village, the only reason why they buy Sunday Vanguard is because of my articles of faith. Okay? But I can, I can always switch them to another medium. I can put them in my own website and they can read. The, 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 the question I have is that why is it at this time that some people are now somebody is sending me 250,000 although he's sending me that for my books but he prefaced it by talking about my articles Clearly, I'm not writing it because of because of the money they are paying me. But yeah, the Bible says a workman he deserves his wages. I think it was Jesus that said that, and I think that yes, as a taking for granted element in it, whereby they can't even publish a book review. That is just you know, these are the people that have been begging me, begging me. They, they, the man, the man phoned me about um, after the election. Asked me if I could write something on the election, etc. I said I'm, I'm not writing a secular article. They're trying to get me to, you know, because they put me. Most people buy newspapers on Tuesday, you know, and which is the trap of the devil. If I write, if I on my Twitter. If I write something that is religious, I might get uh, 50 responses. If I write something secular, I get 26,000. You know, so I know they're trying to trap me into, you know, to this. waste of time of writing about Nigerian politics that's not going anywhere. So yeah, me see, are you changing your mind? About what, sir? 
<laughs> about whether I should stop writing for them. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, there are lots of things that I have a problem with. <laughs> when, when you said they gave me 250, that was when I said, so I said, yeah, just to use to hold your side, you know? No, no they, like they I, are not the one who gave it to me. Well, I have a problem with the proximity of that money. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. to what is happening. So what it seems to me like is somebody said, ah, it's like that man is having a financial, just give him something, let him use it to hold his side. Just give him, just give him like, you know, that that for me really annoys me, you know, because if you're even going to give me something to hold my side, give me like one million now. Which one is two hundred fifty thousand? You know, they, they're just they're just annoying, and I don't like it when people take advantage of me. And when I see people trying to take advantage of somebody, I find it it's if it, it's like you feel you are somehow smarter than the person is. And and that's what I think is going on when they feel like, oh, this guy Joe, he's been writing for this long, nobody paid him anything. Just encourage him, you know, Nigerian. If you just encourage him, you continue writing, writing. writing. And so, it, it's it might be your choice, but me, I will I will not write. Even if they start paying me, I will make them pay me all my money. Then I will not write for them again. No. So I'm but not are, are we supposed to allow people to take advantage of us? Eh? No, no, see, eh? That one. Because, because, because God will tell me, yeah, me see, leave that. You remember what happened with Kola? Because God just said, don't don't answer, just go away. Don't respond. So if I'm supposed to be taken advantage of, because it is important. I will be told specifically, walk away, leave the money, allow and go. But I don't think that we can, I don't believe that we should do it unless we are specifically told, because this is very, very important. It's not just, um, I don't believe that your Christianity makes you a doormat. There has to be some accountability because as Christians, we don't, we are not allowed to treat people like that. And this, this is a Christian column. What is it saying about Christianity? I don't know. And then this thing where the person does not rise, then you quickly go and shock that week with, with their own, without even, you know, because what they're supposed to do is write you and say, ah, Dr. Femi, if you can't write, can we use one of your old articles? So there's just a, a kind of, what is the word now? Just complete um you know when you invite somebody into your house and they come and they open your fridge and take bread and jam out. That's it. <laughs> without without asking you. I I have a friend that, that happened to you. He had a neighbor, and every time the guy came around, you go into his you open his fridge and bring <laughs> the jam and the bread out. So the, the guys, you know, got to the point where he stopped inviting, you know, he stopped opening the door when he knocked because, come on. Ah. No, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would yap that one. Would, <laughs> what are you doing? Come on, you don't behave like that. No, no, don't, don't do that again. You know, I mean, uh, I'll tell you. Uh -uh. Come to my house and then you just open my fridge and bring out jam and, you know, no, that, that's a bit much. In Nigeria, is not. Nigerians are I've, This is the first time I've ever heard of it. I've never, <laughs> I've never heard of anybody doing something as outrageous as that. You just come into somebody's house, then you open their fridge and take out something and you start eating it. No, come on. Uh, uh, my my, my sister-in-law came to my house and she saw my special slippers and she put her feet inside and I said, excuse me. <laughs> Those are, she said, my brother bought it. I said, eh, because your brother bought slippers means that you should come and put your feet How does she know her brother bought it? It's not relevant really whether her brother bought it. Even if her brother bought it, does it mean that 
So if if her brother bought me, I don't even know now. She can just anything. And and that was the statement. Anything anything I said, she would say, uh uh, is it not my brother's money? Is it not my brother's money? No, that one that one is an idiot. That's Nigerians for you, I'm telling you. So the bread and jam one sounds very familiar to me. Because I lived in Calabar. People did that all the time. I've never heard of it before. Ah. You, you, you can't do that with me. No way. Ah. <laughs> and uh, I'm married to a woman that you cannot do that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm just come and open the fridge. <laughs> look, look, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you a story. A, a, a pastor came to our house, okay? Then I, I established a, a, a video, a, a Christian video outfit in a church in Yaba. So the pastor came to see us and said that, you know, he has a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, the, the, the women walking in the shop are wearing earrings. <laughs> <laughs> and I care was in the vicinity of that so, statement. No, she was, she, was, she was sitting there. there. <laughs> so so, so I, I asked, I said, so what? So what what has I got to do with it? Oh, he, he said that you know that but it's not it, it is my salvation that he is concerned about. You, your salvation. Whose salvation? He said it it, it it is my salvation that he is concerned about. <laughs> Look, Karen got on this man's case. Said, What? Who do you think you are talking to? This? <laughs> Look, the man was scared. <laughs> The man was afraid. I don't know who, you know, you know, people just look at you and they think that they can fool these ones or something. I don't know. Maybe I look very gullible or something. Uh, he too quickly took his leave or he, he left after that. What's but somebody he, wearing a ring got to do with your salvation? Precisely. It is just witchcraft. You know, I mean, and, and what what is it that is concerned? You know, he just wants to control. He just, you know, I mean, if the people are wearing a ring. So what? What has that got to do with salvation? What has it, you know? I mean, it's, it's just frivolous. Hmm? But, you know, I mean, there is a scripture that I wanted us to look at. Because, you know, I mean, I, I read this scripture a long time ago. And I kept looking for it, looking for it. I couldn't find it. Then I found it. Okay, Dr. please, uh, your hand is up. Yeah, uh, when, when we are talking about the vanguard issue, if from the, if we're looking at it from taking advantage of somebody from the from the beginning of the whole thing that you signed with them they've already started taking advantage of you because what they signed with you they cheated you even from that point what they gave you was too if we have to look at it you know but because of the kind of person you have because of the kind of faith you have you accept some all the way they've been doing it and and when they do it they feel that uh, I, I don't know what they what think you are a fool. Yeah. Yeah. Aha, they think that you are a fool, you know. But the only aspect I always be careful with is the aspect of God. It is true that when people feel that you are a fool, we know that God, our Father, knows that you are not a fool. And when God allowed that, and for him to allow that, they, I believe that there is always a reason why God made it like that. that. And there is always it. an equalization. Why, why do you assume that it is God that allowed it? I'm the one that allowed it now. Yes, but but what in, in whatever affair you have, God, God gets involved. Okay, like, look at what Yemisi was saying. If, 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 according to her, she said, God can God will tell her that, no, we don't, don't, don't accept. That's the straight instruction. Do you understand? But what of when God did not speak? Yes, when he doesn't, so, he leaves it up to you. So if he leaves us to you, then he expect what he expects you to to the same way he expects you to pay has to be according to what you learn from him. Yeah, no, I don't see that. Okay, let, let, let me put it this way. All right, okay. Someone anointed Saul with the Holy Spirit. All right, and he says, you know, he is now will be the new king of Israel. And he said, well, you know, he said, when you get to this place, the spirit of God will come upon you. And, and so I said, what do you do? He said, do whatever uh, you feel like doing because God is with you. Now, when God does not say anything, okay, he gives you the latitude to take a decision. You understand? And he has already uh, planted his decision in you. Mm -hmm. So, 
whatever decision you take uh, is his decision. Where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. He has, you know, if he, if he, you know, if, 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 when God gives me an instruction, it is because he knows that I would not have gone that way. Hmm. Uh, situations, he allows you, uh, you think you're exercising your free will, but he has already programmed it that, that he has given you the mind of Christ in that situation. So he's not now going to, to, to blame you for, say, why did you take this way? Why did you take that way? No, so you have the latitude to, to do it. Uh, okay. sometimes yeah. sometimes when you give you know I, I, I remember uh, we had instructions for family you can't take anything in the fridge <laughs> we're talking about taking <laughs> outside of you can't take anything in the fridge without asking permission you can't take anything you know okay so at a certain juncture uh, we lifted it and said we can go ahead and take whatever you want but he did not like it he wanted us to instruct him because he he did not have confidence in himself i believe he felt that he might abuse that freedom let me see i wanted to say that i i actually agree with what Dawson said and there's something very fundamental there because you see, if when you were negotiating in the beginning, you told them, oh, I'm, I'm going to charge you 50K per article, they probably would have treated you with more respect. And they probably would have paid you. So there is something about that agreeing to what you and you probably were trying to be, I don't know what, not nice. I don't know what the word is. No, but I but, came back. Oh, we started at ten. I came back. Yeah, but even the twenty. And then we went to fifteen. Was terrible or whatever. Fifteen. Was terrible. Yeah. Is is is. <laughs> yeah, and so so what happens with people is they're thinking, yeah, it's just fifteen k anyway. Mm. So, what, so what is fifteen k to that man? But if you if you charge them seventy five k, and eh, then they'll be afraid that yeah, you better pay him more. So I don't know. I My own understanding. This is this is this was 2010. In fact, what I wrote to them, I pointed out to them that this amount has not increased in 11 years. That in itself is a problem. Because who does that? In fact, the, maybe, so, maybe the step, I think the step you you take might, might might be important if you stop writing because maybe that will, will really yeah. let you understand the the value. Exactly of what you are putting there. Oh, they know they can get easily. You know, I, I'm I'm speaking from experience that people, when you and as a writer as well, because somebody said, "What is the the most? Who is the most um, desirable woman in the world? And what makes her desirable? Because there's so many women, there's so many beautiful women, there's so many." I was waiting for the answer. Well, what does this guy want to say? He said, the most desirable, the most beautiful woman is the woman that says no. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, actually, eh? that, that tells you no and means it. You know, that is the woman that... But once you, you say yes to people, they feel somehow that your value is diminished by saying yes to them. And it's so weird. So they don't look at you and say, ah, this guy is trying. No. You going to tell them no. And you raise the amount. That is when they 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 run after you. So okay, hold on, hold on. Let, 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 let me give you but this part of this history, you know. Okay, so um they told me to be writing secular articles. So they gave me a Tuesday column because pe people read the newspapers more on Tuesday than at any other time. So after some time, I mean, my Tuesday column was very, very popular. After some time, they were now afraid of Buhari. 
I'm glad he's not my friend. I, I, you know, I mean, I, part of my agreement with them is that you cannot edit anything I write. You can't change any word in it without my permission. So they came to see me. They begged me that, please, I should not write about Buhari. Write about any, anybody else, but not, don't write about Buhari because they are after them. And I said, well, this is contrary to my agreement with you. Which means that you are not tailored to the freedom of the press. They said, we know how to survive. That was what, you know, they might have been to a meeting of the editorial board. They said, we know how to survive. So I said, well, I'm not writing for you on Tuesdays again. So they have been begging me about Tuesday for a long time. Even That's why I said that even last month, told me that I should write something on the election. I said, I'm not writing. So they have been begging me about a Tuesday call up that I refused to write. But anyway, let me deflect the, the discussion to this. That is a scripture I said I was looking for. And I remember seeing it and then God brought it to my attention. It's a statement of David here. It's Psalm 69 verse 4. It says, those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. They are mighty who would destroy me being my enemies wrongfully. But it is the last, last part that is of interest to me. Though I have stolen nothing, I still must restore it. Now, this to me is a very strange scripture. That is, uh, let, me, let, me, let me see if I can contextualize it with a parable. I'm living with some friends. Somebody bought a tub of ice cream, put it in the fridge, and somebody ate it. But then the owner accused me that I'm the one who ate it. I'm not the person. So what does David say? I go and buy a tub of ice cream and replace it. Even though I'm the one, I'm not the one who ate the ice cream. Would you do that? That's why I asked the question. I mean, you know, there's, there's something similar. Paul says that, you know, rather than go to court, why don't you just accept the wrongdoing? If I didn't steal it, why must I restore it? What do you think? Festus. It's, it's very difficult, but um, I, I feel that if most of the time that the behaviors and what a believer go through, you will discover that um, we have been doing that same thing that David says because. Sometimes it's not just because we want to say is that um, what happened Are you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. So um it's not that we just want to justify ourselves, but I feel that um the word of God is peace by itself and just because they were taking so much of it, sometimes things that uh that we think the other way we we believe that we we can do it in a way whereby we just want peace to reign. Um, I've, most of the time, I don't know, but I have done I have done so many things that same way, and. To me, I feel I feel peace within me, even though I feel that I'm, I know that I'm not the one that do that certain things. But I feel that there is a peace within me. 
people will look at it, yes. Uh, yes, if it's not the one that we, what did he have to, how did he have to replace it? Because if you, if you, if you restore it, they will conclude that, okay, he's the one who stole it. Uh, yes, most of the time they say so. Uh, and they say so, and uh, I don't know how God stands now will now stand in between that because I have done so many times, more than five, six times that I have done something like that. And I've 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 leave it that way. Whether you think it's me or it's uh, but nothing concerns me. Um I was in Yabatek also, um where we the, the school gave us a place where we were staying. And I have with uh, I was staying with some of my classmates together, and you know something missed. I was just a small thing because it's uh, uh, um, this a notebook. You know, we're writing exam, and then someone say he bring a notebook, he keep it here. Um, everybody say I don't know where the notebook. Is. This one say I don't know where. This one say I don't know where. This one say I don't know where. And the guy was very angry. Now, if everybody said they don't know where the notebook is, uh, there is there's a conspiracy against him. And I just feel like, what is notebook? I went and buy notebook. It was just 115 naira. I dropped it for him. You know? And he said, yes, you know that I'm the one that stole the notebook. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am the one. But you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take anything out of me. I feel that you have gotten your notebook. That is so let's continue. And I leave it the way it is, you know. And there's so many things like that. But I feel that sometimes within it, as far as we have taken so much of God was, and this God was is peace. We just feel that anywhere we go, let there be peace. We don't care what happened, what people will say like will say about us. Yes, you are the one that stole the money because you have restored, you have given back the money back. Yeah, he's the one. So my fear is it would come to a situation whereby you would try to do that and then at the end, what will come out of it? Will either they beat you to death or they beat you to stop you or they beat you to come out. That is take where you to the police. Fear. Or take you to the police. That is where my fear is. But when you look at it, so what? I don't know whether I have gotten to the stage where that will happen, and then I will say so what. But yes, as far as that world is come, we'll continue eating the world. We'll get to a stage whereby your eyes is open, you are seeing so much, it becomes so useless for you. So what? So what happened? No, but if we if we, if we get to that crunch, God will God will arise and defend you, because there's a that, is that says in righteousness you shall be established, and you will be far from oppression. Mm -hmm. Mm. He's, he's another that, that says we should seek peace and pursue it. I suppose you know th that kind of action is one where you are just a person that is seeking peace. She is a notebook. Okay, all right. Uh, just 150, then, you know, get a notebook. Let's forget about it. And let's continue. But you know, the whole begrudge is up to now. You know? <laughs> He felt that someone doesn't want him to pass the exam. That's why they stole the notebook. Oh, it's, yeah. But so this is is where you know where God we God will take us. Uh, um, I was telling someone that he will get to a time whereby there's so much of God in you. People look at you like you are foolish. You know, every single thing you do, you do yeah. they don't say with. I don't know how God do things like that, but He knows perfectly. You know, so yeah, I, I, I think that is what I'm struggling with. That you know, uh, that these vanguard people must really think I'm an idiot. Yeah. But yeah, you, you, are, you, are, you are owing me six million, and I tell you to publish a book review, and you are still probably you are still dragging your feet. I mean, you know, it's just I'll send the letter. You know, let's see how they react. <laughs> yeah, you know, they, they feel they feel that. There is um a feel that who is this one, you know? Uh what consign was consigned. You know, they just feel that what is this saying, by the way? There's nothing he can do. And that is where sometimes no, there, 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 there are things you can do. But let, let me tell you this. One of the things that I don't like 
okay? And it's happened with me again and again, is to surprise people. You understand? Okay? They, 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 people think that maybe you are foolish, maybe you don't have sense, maybe you know. And when they do it, do it, do it, one day, okay, you react. Another oh. person loses his job or something, and they are surprised because they didn't think you would ever do that. Oh. I think that even my sending this bill to Vanguard will be one big surprise. Huh? Is somebody put him up to it or how this is not like him yeah, yeah that's what they would think he's a surprise mm. they would think, ah, you could have not done that they think that you would just forget about the man yeah because they feel that there is so much you just feel that they, they because of the knowledge you have in god people just look at you you have too much money doesn't know what to do even though they look to you it's just the grace of god that is keeping you. They don't think that maybe uh, there's more money now. You don't need to even ask for it. But when they see the letter, it will be a shock to them. You don't know. It's the way God do. So. I want to see what they will do. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was counseling a couple. You know, so I asked the lady. I said, if you are the one that did something wrong, would you still want your husband to apologize? She said yes. <laughs> then I then I then I asked the husband, I said, if you didn't do something wrong, would you apologize even though you are you are not in the wrong? He said he does that all the time. I said, okay, so that's why this lady <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> this lady has come to expect you to, to... <laughs> yes yeah, me see. yeah that's enabling isn't it where that person begin uh, convincing themselves with your help that they're right even though they're wrong and I think that happens a lot as well in the church where you will find the person who is actually being victimized will be told, oh, go and apologize or um, go and make peace with your abuser. Or so, and so for me, I think this is a very important discussion where, you, you know, it feels like the the this the so-called Christian point of view is very cut and dry. This is God said, or Jesus said, turn the other cheek. So um it means that, you know, because to be honest with you, I'm not, I will I won't under no circumstance will I go and replace something that was stolen that I did not steal. Because I, I don't understand what that achieves. Uh, hold, hold on, yeah, see. I, I, I think that the Christian position is not is not cut and dry. It, it isn't, but we it make isn't. it that. It, it, because... the, the problem is that most people don't understand the nuances of it. Because I, I point out that Jesus says, if they slap you on the, on the one cheek, turn the other cheek. But when they slapped Jesus, he didn't turn the other cheek. Apart from that, that statement is not a physical statement alone, but we make it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. There are so many nuances to it. Yeah, but I mean, when we talk about things like, I'm, I'm these topics come up all the time where it's like, oh, this is, this is, this is it. This is, you know, um, this is what the Bible says. This is the letter here. And you know, there's no, I don't know. So. 
I, I, I even wonder something. There's something that has occurred to me, which is, do these people think, oh, this guy is a Christian, you know, right? And he's writing this thing because his his main it's it's not about the money you see he's it's 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 about his Christianity yeah. so so we don't can have, take advantage of him you don't know it's not even that as much as oh you know even if you didn't pay him he would do it because that's what Christians do. Because when I was running that hall in Emmanuel Haven, you had people come around and do all sorts of things because we're supposed to be Christians. So, you know, if you, if you slap a Christian, a Christian doesn't respond, so you can slap him. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I wrote about, about a, a friend of mine who rented a generator to to a parish of Zoe Ministries. And um, they didn't pay him for it. I mean, he was doing business with the generator. Their own generator was stolen. And he rented the generator to them. The church didn't pay him. And after some time, he decided, okay, please, can I have my generator back? And the pastor said that, doesn't he doesn't he think that he should give this church the generator? <laughs> you understand? And I mean, you know, doesn't he have the common sense to know that that is the right thing to do? That that is a Christian thing to do. And then he 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 went and preached a message that they could seize their your benefits. And the church can seize your bless your blessings. They are not careful, etc. So this guy was confused. And he came to see me and said, you know, what's it, what's it to do? I said, what are you to do? Don't have a discussion with the pastor. Take a truck, go there, carry your generator and leave. Don't have it, you know. I said, this is just, this is witchcraft, pure and simple. That's what he did. Carry the generator and left. You know, it was Androcles and a lion. And, the, you know, that the, one of the central plots of the of the message was that these Romans will see Christians that are going to be fed to lions. And when they see them, they slap them. And they tell them to turn the other cheek. So... This this uh, this centurion went and slapped one of these Christians, and the Christians laughed and said, "You know, the last person that slapped me like that is in the mortuary." <laughs> <laughs> and the man, you know, the man started shaking, and he said, "You know, your faith prevents you from from slapping me back." He said, "No, my faith." <laughs> 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 he said, I will show you my real faith today. <laughs> you know? Look, this is, a, this is a true story, but I can't tell you the, the people's names, obviously. So the, the, the wife catches the husband. Um, the, the husband is unfaithful. So she, so she says to him, she says, and he's, a, he's like a serial unfaithful guy. So she says to him, <laughs> Um, you know, what do you, so I just want you to understand that I have the capacity to cheat. So what do you think about that? Hmm? What do you think about that? He said, what, what does the Bible say? (laughs) (laughs) So whatever the Bible says, he didn't say it to he to the to the he other. Say <laughs> no, no, that's what he said. Like, look, we we've already established that I'm weak, right? But well, you, you yeah, 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 you know, what does the Bible say about cheats? What about cheating and about sexual uh, uh, purity and all of that? Because we know you are strong. 
So what's your excuse if you willfully go and cheat? Okay, let, let, let's deflect for a minute to an issue that I brought today, which is actually a polemic. Um, the, let me pose the question to we'll start with to, um, to Amara. Amara, good evening. Good evening, Uncle. Do you believe that everything in the Bible is the truth? No, I'm not sure if everything is the truth. Let me show you a scripture that people people often use when when we get to this kind of discussion. It's in Second Timothy three sixteen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I don't think that uh, the second part of this particular scripture is actually, should actually be in dispute. I believe that all scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It might not be profitable for doctrine, but that's, you know, but... Do you believe that all scripture is given by inspiration of God? Yes. Yes. All okay. scripture. Yes, because if, if God didn't want it to be there, then it, it wouldn't. It would not be there. Um. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to you in a minute. Uh, Benedict. Good evening. Don't take a year to open your mic. Up. Good evening, sir. Good evening, church. Good evening. Do you believe that all scripture is given by inspiration of God? Uh, I, I was in... Not all. Why do you say not all? Reason? Because um, according to the Old Testament, the, um, the book, the visual schoolers, they added their own to it. That's why Jesus Christ was talking about the commandment of men. They, they let, they leave the the, the commandment of God and the insert their own and make sure that people keep to their own commandments. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult discussion. I, I don't think. Can you close your mic? There's so much noise coming from you, Benedict. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the problem. Yeah. Uh, it's a difficult discussion, but I don't think we should run away from it. Uh, because it is difficult. Let me go back to Amara. Amara. Okay, uh, let, let me hear from the two first before going to, to, back to Amara. Well, before I used to believe that uh, we can't hear you. Dr. Something is wrong with your mic. Yeah, before I used to believe that uh, the, the uh, all scripture are not. Uh, there are some that I don't believe, but later, after a long time of uh, thinking and going through, I believe that all scripture are from God. Because if 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 they are not from God, one they are not they are not going to be there. Even there is a particular scripture that says that there is a line pen of the prophet that you know, you know. Even with that one, that there is a line, God still allowed it for a reason, because we need to understand that the Bible. The words are not just uh, right. No, there, there, there is the good, there is the bad, and there is the ugly. 
and there's a reason why God allowed it. And there's no way it those words because if we the only way one can be skeptical is only when we are taking it as a letter. There's a spirit behind those words. You know, he said the spirit gives lives, the letter kill it. If we don't understand that, the letter might kill us. We might not want to believe. But if we understand the spirit of God that is behind every word, we we'll know that those words words are from God. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, it's it's not it's not as simple as that. Uh, let me go back to to um, to Amara for a minute. Amara, I want us to just use one element of scripture for this discussion. Did David kill Goliath? Mm -hmm. No. Pardon? No. But first Samuel says he did. You are meant to understand that is they've already given you the background to it that you so you so you know it's implied. What is the implication? I don't understand. That God is the one who killed. Okay, but that's that's not what I'm that's not what I mean. Okay. God is the one. Okay, right. But who is the person who physically killed Goliath? David. According to scripture, right? Yes. But I'm going to show you a scripture that says it's not true. So I just wanted to use it as a discussion. Second Samuel 21 19. In another battle with the Philistines of, at Gob, El Hanan, son of Jari Oregum, the Bethlehemite, Beth killed Goliath the Gittite with a spear, with a shaft, like a weaver's rod. Well, in 2 Samuel 21:19. We are told that it was Elhanan, one of David's mighty men, that actually killed Goliath the Gittite. So, which is this? Who is this Goliath the Gittite? Is the same the same Goliath? How do you know that? <laughs> okay, uh, because there is only one Goliath the Gittite in the scriptures. Was the Goliath that David killed, was he called the Gittite? Yes. He's a Gittite. Because you see, there are lots of giants. In, because David was supposed to have killed more than one giant, right? David didn't kill any giant. Oh. Okay. You know, okay, okay, you know so, so let, me, let me tell you how the problem, are, the, 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 how the, the, the problem evolved. In fact, you know, um sorry let me let me let me open this and go back uh, i i i i spend a long time studying all kinds of things in scriptures okay and one of the things that i studied extensively was about this question of david killing goliath and when I studied David killing Goliath, I discovered there are two stories in the, in the Bible. One says David killed Goliath, and the other said it was Elhanan that killed Goliath the Gittite. Okay, both of them are Goliath the Gittite. Now, and I then said, well, both of these cannot be true. So I decided to investigate. So when I investigated like a lawyer, 
the overwhelming evidence that I obtained was that David did not kill Goliath. It was Elhanan that killed Goliath. But that it was in the tradition of Israel that you ascribe the glory to somebody. So the story was made up that it was David who killed Goliath. And when you pursue the story of David killing Goliath, so many aspects of the story just does not make sense. It doesn't add up. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I have not come tonight to present the study to you, but I, let me, I, I will point out one or two critical elements in it. After David ostensibly killed Goliath, the women were saying David killed his tens of thousands and Saul only killed his 1,000 and Saul says they want to give David the kingdom. So he's after David to kill him. So what does David do? David sought refuge with the Philistines. Okay? Which beggars belief. <laughs> you understand? He ran into Philistia. Now, he then decided to take refuge in a particular city. And the city that he decided to take refuge in was the city of Goliath, the hometown of Goliath. Now, if, <laughs> if David wanted to take refuge anywhere after killing Goliath, that would be the last place that he would go to. He went and sought refuge in the home of Goliath. Not only that, he joined the Philistine yeah. army. Yeah. And at a particular juncture, he was going to follow them to fight against Israel. Now, so it raised a number of questions, okay? One of it was that the, the writer of Second Samuel and the Chronicles, uh, the, the, you had two, two, two traditions with regard to David. There were those that liked David and they wrote all kinds of things that came into the Bible about him, praising him. And there were those that hated David and they wrote all kinds of things about him because I find it difficult to believe that whether he killed Goliath or not, an Israelite will seek refuge in the home of Goliath and would not be killed there. So I think that there were people who were writing this to give David a bad name. Okay? But then there are all kinds of elements of the story that didn't make sense. Number one, David was a teenager. He was just, he just came to give some food to his brothers and uh, found that this was this giant that was come fooling everybody and decided that he could fight him. Now, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever to allow David to fight Goliath because of the terms of combat. The terms of combat is this. If Goliath says, if I kill your champion, you become our slaves. If, they, if your champion kills me, you have won. In which case, instead of having the two armies fighting one another, just the battle of two people would determine the war. Under the circumstances, 
it doesn't make any sense to ask a teenager who was not even old enough to be in the army, has no battle experience to represent Israel because he would just be killed. Okay? But one tradition says, Saul says, you can't fight this Goliath. He's been, he's been fighting battles all his life and you are a little child. Another tradition says, when David offered to fight Goliath, they said he was a mighty man of valor. Which one is it? He's not even in the army. Okay? One says, before that time, David had been conscripted into the house of Saul. Okay, because an evil spirit, when the, when the Holy Spirit left Saul, an evil spirit came on him. And the only way he could get his bearings was to have somebody play music to him. So somebody said, look, there is this young boy who is a good musician. So they conscripted David to come and play music to Saul. So, and Saul wrote to David's father and said, please, let this boy be with me. Uh, but then, when the Goliath scene came up, so does not know David. He's never met him. And in the earlier episode, where he had written to his father to ask for permission for David to stay with him and play music, in the other one, he's asking, Whose son is this boy? Uh, and they had to say, his father is Jesse or whatever, you know. Uh, there is just no alignment whatsoever. In one, it says David killed Goliath with a sling and a stone. Another one says he killed Goliath with a sword. I mean, there are all kinds of inconsistencies which tells you about different traditions. It's the same thing with Abraham. We find the same thing in, in Genesis. Different traditions woven together and they don't really, they, they don't exactly connect. They don't exactly connect. So we have a little boy who was maybe 13, 14, who killed Goliath. And according to the scripture, they made him a general. And nobody in the, and everybody in the army is pleased. Come on, it's it, you know there are just so many things there that do not work. And you know, um, and then you have attempts by people to try and doctor the scriptures. I said that I'm, I'm not pitching on this. I just wanted to use it as an example. Let me give you, let me, let me show you one from the one that I just opened. So this is New King James. New, uh, New International Version. The New International Version says, in another battle with the Philistines at Gob, Elhanan, son of Jare Oregum, the Bethlehemite, killed Goliath the Gittite. But what does King James say? What does King James say? Let's open King James. King James says, What happened? We seem to have lost it. Okay, this is King James. So King James says, again, there was war at Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, 
the son of Jari Oregum, the Bethlehemite, killed the brother of Goliath, the Gittite. Okay? Now, King James doctors the Bible, but it admits that it does. So if you see this particular one, right, it says, Elhanan, the son of Jari Oregum, the Bethlehemite, killed, you will find that the brother of is in italics. Okay, so King James says, I added the brother of. Now, King James does this. If you have a physical Bible, okay, King James does this a lot. It will add words to the Bible, but then it will put at the bottom of the page that it will put it in italics. And it will tell you that I added this, you know, now because it didn't make sense. So what, what is he trying to do? He's trying to trying to unify something that does not unify. By now saying it is the brother of Goliath. No, he was Goliath that he killed. And we had an example of that with Job, with Job. Job conquered a city. And when he conquered a city, he stopped and went to call David. And had David come in and pretend that he was the one that took the city uh, so that the glory would go to David and not to Joab. This is just to be politically correct so that they don't think I want to take your kingdom from you. Uh, so, you know, so I'm interested in the larger picture. Okay. The larger picture is this that. In the final analysis, there are two contrasting stories about David killing Goliath in the Bible. So not everything in the Bible can be the truth. OK? Um, and you know, if there, there, there are all kinds of books. They call them apologetics that try to unify, etc. you know? Now, my own position in the end is about the integrity of God. Because when you pass information through man, huh, it cannot be exact. It can no longer be precise. OK, some information was passed through me that I myself doctored, God told me, I'm going to remove George Obioso on, on Tuesday. I put next to it. God is going to remove George Obioso next Tuesday. But he didn't say next Tuesday. He said on Tuesday. It took a few years for him to remove George Obioso on Tuesday on NTA News. But I put the next. Uh, when you pass it through man, there is something that we sometimes add. So I don't know. I just want to open it for discussion. What do you guys think? Is Ozioma here or, or, or not? I always have to ask that question. If she doesn't answer, I know she's just listening. OK. So yeah, me see, what do you think? Yes, Ozioma is here. Ozioma is here. <laughs> so, Ozioma yes, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Oh, good evening. Sorry. Yeah, whichever one. <laughs> it is one world. It is up. It's obviously afternoon where you are, if not morning. Yes. Mm. yes. So, uh, because I, I, I feel we, we, well, what do you think? Uh, I, I kind of agree with you. You know, it's. Uh, I will give an example. This uh, don't muzzle the ox that, you know, threads the grain. Or um, I met a Muslim woman. I, I was in a cafeteria at one the old hospital I was working at. And um, it was a Muslim woman that was, you know, in the cafeteria. And when you want to buy a salad or vegetables, the weight is by weight. And I heard her I heard her talking to telling somebody that, oh, you know, in my religion, we have to be very careful about this weight. We don't play with it. But 
if you look at those scriptures, it's actually talking about honesty in general and not just and not just weight. Or, you know, so I guess I I I think I, I get I get your drift. Okay. Uh, yes, let me see. Sir. <laughs> what do you mean by sir? So do, 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 you know because you, um in those days when I you know I mean I, I've I've written extensively on David not killing Goliath and people they will not deal with the facts they will just abuse me on the internet and uh, you know uh, just I think it's, I think it's interesting that it, it the Bible also talks about four giants and then he talks about david's company um so i'm not sure why this the that story with one line would override david's own story even though oh it's not just one line i, I was <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm i tell you that the overwhelming evidence indicates that David did not kill Goliath. It's not just one line. I didn't. I don't have a problem with him going to live with Philip, those people because he killed their champion, right? So, um, if you kill their I, champion, they're going to kill you. In fact, no, I don't know. I I doubt it because also, as you as you said, the terms of the 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 battle was one man against one man. And the one that wins determines. Um, yeah, you see, it's actually in the scriptures. According to the account that David killed Goliath, they were looking for David to kill him, the Philistines. It's in your Bible. And at, and the then, and then at some point, at the starting juncture, they had to remove David from the battle because they say, you know, we don't want the light of his point. Yeah, yeah. No, no. At a, at a point, even when he was fighting with those other people, you know, they now. I don't know what I can't remember. Somebody came and said, "Remove this guy. He's not. He's not coming to fight this particular battle." I think I'm. I'm trying to remember what happened. Whether he was accused of scuttling the battle with your with Israel, I can't remember what happened. But he he got and then he was upset because he was, huh? What was pretending? No. Mm -mm. He wasn't pretending to be upset because he had been fighting with them now. He was fighting with the police times. Then some. Then he. Ah, I can't remember. Anyway, it's. Um, he had killed his own people. I don't know. I mean, I was. I was. One of the things that came up about David was why did David. Why, why, why did he age? So was it because he was he was always fighting battles and he was a man of blood and all of that? Because he didn't live very long, and he he uh, aged we, very. We, long. He lived to seventy. Yeah, and then I mean they say you know he, he he could not keep warm. They went to go and bring one. Yeah. So he he just I don't know anybody else in the Bible that sounds like that. Like he, you know not very. I don't know. No, but, you know, okay, so, 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 see, part of the problem that I had, okay, was that when I studied David, I found him to be a completely disagreeable human being. You know, I mean, um, um, David, David is a terrible person. The, you know, and, 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 and you know, this, it, it taught me a lesson about God. The critical issue for God is what you think about him. It defines everything. How you relate to him. David was a terrible yeah. person. David spent most of his early years with a band of marauders. And what he was doing, you know, he had area boys. What he was doing, he would go to a place and kill the people there and carry their property. But you have a lot of those kings were. Very, I mean, this 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 fellow. That's this, what he was doing. So you know, I mean, it, 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 there was nothing righteous about the man. 
Look, on his, dead, on his deathbed, he was plotting the death of two people. Told Solomon, must kill these guys. God I, said, didn't even, I didn't even understand why Solomon followed that instruction. Because there's one particular one. Why, you know, but that's what I'm saying that if, if when I, sometimes when I read the Old Testament, I'm just like, I don't even understand what's going on here. I, I mean, the, this other guy that they told, go and go and anoint him as king. That one was even more terrible than David now. That one I went to go and kill Jezebel. What's his name? Joe something. Joe. Je, was it Jehu? There's, there was... There... Anyway. So, you yeah, know... But, you, but, but, again, but, but again, the story of Jehu... Huh? That, that, that's a contradiction. In one, that's a prophecy that he would kill Jezebel and he would kill, it would, it would destroy that kingdom. By the time you get to Hosea, God says he's going to judge him. Yes. For what that's he what so there's there's a lot of um I don't know it's which is why even the Bible itself as a document of you want to decide that you want to follow the letter they're going to have a problem. I mean, go back to that. To, that's the, that the beauty of the Bible in the end is Jesus. But the Bible opened up to me because, you know, I mean, I always saw Jesus as the redeeming element of the scriptures. And then I discovered that the person who was telling them to go and kill everybody, kill the babies, you know, kill the women, kill everybody, was Jesus. Huh? It changed the whole thing entirely. Because I, I always wanted to separate Jesus from all those things. Then I discovered that he was bang in the center of it. It was him. Yes, Benedict. Okay, was it was it Benedict or was it your man? Yes, 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 it was me. Benedict. Okay. I think um that is um one of the reasons why I conclude that if you really want to know the word of God, is Jesus. If you stick with him, if you stick with him. There is no way you um you will miss him. But that is the only word of God that exists. And John confirmed the confirmed the word. He was yeah, one but of I'm saying God. that the word of God was also speaking in the old testament, and that word of God that was speaking in the old testament was Jesus. Yes, we are not what we are doing now, they're trying to know the true word of God. Mm -hmm. Because if we go through Bible, you will join everything together. You will join everything but, together. But, 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 the, but the God of the Old Testament is Jesus. It's true. It's true. You see, you see, okay, so 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 let me let me try, let me try and present it this way. Okay. Now Jesus, Jesus is the same person in the Old Testament, right? Okay. And yes. he's the one. That is the way God is. But uh, so that we will understand the mercy of God. You understand? Okay. The mercy of okay. God now came to prevail over the wrath and the judgment of God. That's all. You know? So there was there's no contradiction. It's the same. So so we, we, we cannot even take his mercy for granted because the same guy that shows us mercy, huh? he, he, he can deal so with us. Huh? <laughs> mean that, mean that all of us, we are, we are all sinners. Because if you look at what the ultimate presenting, I mean that everybody will just um, taking advantage of whoever he can take advantage of until Jesus now came to redeem everything. Because David also took advantage of somebody. Or I also took advantage of David. Mm. 
doctor. Yes. And that was the mean because if, if if you look at it from the Old Testament, most of the scriptures they don't have job. You cannot present anything that you see that like an old God that this is righteous and give you. No, but, but Some, whatever God does is righteous. Where did we learn righteousness from? From God, yeah. Yes, <laughs> you know. So God says, you know, I mean, we, they, they should kill somebody. What, what, you cannot what, say what, what, it's what, righteous. What, most of them are on behalf of Jesus, on behalf of Jesus. And they claim it's Jesus. But by the time you come to New Testament, even in the time of Jesus, no, 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 but there, was, there, there, are, there are situations in the Old Testament when they didn't say God told them. God was speaking directly. Okay. So it wasn't that Moses said, God told me that they should kill. You know, God was speaking and said, I want you to kill these people. I want you. That, that, that was what he told Saul. Go to these people and kill all of them. Kill, don't spare anybody. Kill the women, kill the babies, kill the donkeys, kill everybody. It was not it was not hearsay. No, it was God that gave that instruction. And when okay. Saul did not obey that instruction completely, the kingdom was taken away from him. Okay. So it is the same God. In the New Testament, it tells you it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of living God. Okay, the beauty of our situation is that we fell into the mercy of the living God. <laughs> that, that, that's, 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 that's only what it is. Uh, that God was merciful to us. What's your mind? Yes, sir. Your mic is open, so I wonder if you wanted to say something. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh, sorry. I, I must have forgotten. So there, there, there are all these different polemics. For instance, there, there, are, there are two stories of Abraham in the Tanakh. Two stories. They are repeated. And they are written by two different traditions. Okay? And for me, that actually makes it even more authentic. Because God is not separating man from the exposition. And it's putting it there, what's and all. For us to see it, you know, it does not detract from who he is, and it does not detract from his truth. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't. But the larger question that I asked, okay, because I wrote an article, okay, and I, 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 I entitled it. The David that did not kill Goliath. Because the story of David killing Goliath, right, cannot fit the new covenant. In the new covenant, David did not kill Goliath. Goliath killed David. You understand? The, 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 you know, I mean, uh, and, and Christians don't seem to appreciate this because they are still talking about the story of David killing Goliath and have not realized that the issue has changed. Has changed. You know, I mean, the, 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 Zabidi, the Zabidi brothers wanted the people in uh, the, the, the Samaria to be killed because they did not allow them free passage because. You know, Elisha, a bear came and mauled children with Elisha. Elijah slaughtered 400 prophets of Baal. 
And Jesus said, wait a minute. This is a different dispensation. You don't know what spirit you are made of. It's a different, you know, I mean, the same God, now his mercy has triumphed against his judgment. And that is the message of the gospel. You know, so, but we are still acting David killing Goliath. We are still talking about David killing Goliath. And we have gone way, way, way past that now. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any other thing to say. I, I don't, you know, if you want, I can do it. I can do a... a I can do a special service on just pointing out to you why it is obvious it was Elhanan that killed Goliath. Or if you like, I can send it to you by email so that you can read it. But there's no question that it was not David that killed Goliath. It was Elhanan. It was well, I always uh, think about the what is it? What is really so special, so big deal about David killing Goliath when you look at it deep down? Uh, apart from the general message that was preached, I say well, that... The, uh, the, 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 the argument is that, you know, God empowered him. Right? Even though he was weak, yet he was strong. But we actually understand that David was not weak. Because the sling and the stone was a was a potent weapon of war, even at that time. It was not just David that was using it. Well, well then apart from his story, if we look at the life of David said, we know that he's somebody that God is always with. Because if God is not with somebody him, is a man of blood. Yes, but God allowed all those things. Maybe the judgment later now came. Oh, I don't, you know, when he became a king, the most of the thing. Of, you know, seventy something thousand Jews were killed because wow. they numbered, numbered, numbered Israel. Hmm. Well, I agree with you. Everything you say, you say, even on a sick bed, on a sick bed, that was the one that even baffles me most. On a sick bed, he's still plotting how some telling Solomon how to. I don't know. That is always where well, everything is. In the old age, they are still looking for a young girl to come and sleep with him. It's it's, it's, it's just <laughs> what kind of human being is this? Uh, and it it went to another level with his son Solomon. That one now had seven hundred wives and three hundred concubines. You can see that this was a strain that came from his from his father. Look, um, a, a man was. The man had his sheep or whatever, his animals, and David helped them. Okay? Mm. He, he helped them. And uh, later on, David said, you know, please, can you tell him to give us, you know, some cakes, some wine or whatever? And the man said, rubbish, what should I give you? And David decided that he's going to kill the man. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> He was going to go and kill the man if he, Abigail did not intercede. And then, you know, the man had a heart attack and dies. How do you know he had a heart attack? <laughs> what did he have? He had a heart attack. You know, what happened was uh -huh. that no. the, wife, the wife told him that, look, the person that you formed fooled was David. You know, and the man got so scared, he had a heart attack. What did, what no, did he have? No. What did he have? No, no, what happened? First of, all, first of all, the guy had been drinking all night. <laughs> <laughs> you, yes. you, you, you left that part out too. Okay, all right. So by, <laughs> the time he's, by the time he's... <laughs> they, and they didn't say he had a heart attack. They say he just turned to what, stone and just... Yes, now what so what happened to him? He was he was scared. I what don't know. I don't know what, what happened did. to that guy. Why did he say that, sir? Well, I don't know what else he could have had. Because it was the story that the wife told him. And the wife told him that the person that was, this thing was David and he was coming to kill you. You know, 
died immediately. So what could it be? I I, I, no, because when De- he, he knew who David was now, because when David went to go and ask him, he, he looked at him and he said, didn't know. I don't know. I don't know what's happening with all these servers. I just run away from the ambassador, just going up and down. He just he spoke did to not, He about. didn't know. That he, he did not know who David was. He, he knew. He, uh-huh. didn't know. <laughs> he didn't know it was a David. He that- introduced himself. He said, look, this is who I am. I've been taking care of your way, your your your, your yes, ship. Yes, but he did not know him. that it was the famous and he just David. Just him anyhow. Eh? He did not know that it was the famous David. Mm. Uh, let's take a look at it. I'm going to open it. He didn't know it was the famous David. Now, when he realized it was the famous David, he knew he was in trouble. Okay, let's 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 look at it. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, he had an attack. I had it. <laughs> okay, you might you might you might have a different opinion. Ah. Huh? Now, one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master and revive them. But the men were very good to us. We were not hurt. Then did we miss anything as long as we accompanied them when we were in the fields? They were a wall to us, both by night and day, all the time we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, no one consider what you will do. For Ham is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a scoundrel that no one can speak to him. Now, David had decided that he's going to kill everybody in this man's house because the man didn't give him some some food. The Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves, you know, okay? Now, so Abigail interceded for her husband, abused her own husband and said the man is a scoundrel, his name is Nabal, foolish, to, you know, which is very strange that you are just abusing your husband. But let's, let's leave that one right there. Let, you know. Okay. Just telling the truth now. I, I don't know whether you're supposed to say that about your husband. Okay, now verse 36. Now Abigail went to Nabal and there he was holding a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him for he was very drunk. Therefore, she told him nothing, little or much, until the morning light. Okay? He's not drunk again, no. So it was in the morning when the wine had gone from Nabal and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him and it became like a stone. Now, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, you know, when she told him, uh, Nabal, Nabal, Nabal Nava became his dude. To me, I had a taco. Okay. Yes, who's the other man? <laughs> yes. Um you see, I, I don't I don't um Abigail is a very wise woman. The woman is sharp. We have to give it to her. Yes, because if David and his men came they would to have attack, they would have killed everybody. They would have killed her too. So she saved her head, but, you know, but, by but, doing but that. But do you agree that, that David should kill everybody because they didn't give him some food? You remember we talked about uh, everything in life being contextual. Now, David and his men have spent months walking, okay, spending their resources, watching so that Nabal can have this great harvest that he had. So Nabal... The, the man didn't hire them now. Did he hire them? Well, it might be, it might be something cultural that, you know, somebody does some certain thing for you, you do for them, like in Igbo culture. You know, okay. I, I try to, you know, Igbo behavior. If you, you somebody will come from your village and work for you for maybe if you have a shop, work for you for several years, and then as repayment, you will set up the person in business. So even though there's no contract, you know, there's that agreement, there's that understanding okay, that that's, that's this is how, yeah, this is how things to work. So the neighbor, the neighbor must be a a, a kick uh, is four one nine. Okay, would you but, say you know, so that the answer, the answer then is for you to decide to kill everybody in this house? Is it that maybe is, that is how it was in that walk. time? Remember, uh, maybe that was the culture of that time. That is <laughs> why, why when Nabal heard it, not the culture of that time, that's the culture of David. It wasn't the culture, 
Is a I didn't believe it was the culture. That's the way you know, we were talking about Ibos today. That, that's the way David was living. Yeah, even, those, even, those, even those that didn't do that to him, <laughs> he went and ransacked them. And you know, the, the, you know, the king would ask him, Where did you go today? He would say he went to this place and he will, he will, he will kill everybody there and carry all their property. Yeah. Even if it's culture, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't necessarily then make it right that because it is cultural, well. then <laughs> You know, <laughs> he's like, a British man. I mean, we know that he has some problems. And, and I don't think I think that woman too sharp for her own good because I wonder she went. Then she then she said, uh, hey, you know, "My you sister, know, my sister, you know, hey, hey, my sister, you know. relax. If you did, if I'm in that situation, I my that kind of man. I, somebody will kill me. I will do the same thing, and I'm sure you will do the same thing. Let us be telling the truth. Let us be saying the truth here. Wait, wait, wait. You know my problem with her. All that fine girl she's doing is to go and become number what in David's Before heart. Uncle, that is wisdom because the Nabal is going to. No be wisdom. Dead it is high level wisdom. This is political science. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> The political side, because the man is going to die. If he dies, he's going to die. <laughs> Who will she stay with? What are you talking about? I uh, this guy has been anointed king. In there's there's a there's a but she didn't know he was going to die like that, that now. That he's going to the palace. I she joined the train. She's a smart girl, she's sharp. She didn't know she didn't know the husband was going no, to die. No, no, no. They said she's a prophetess. You know, she's ranked as a prophetess, so she must have known that guy was not <laughs> going to die. Because I, I, I mean, at this point, I think uh, this guy Samuel has already anointed David. All right, so there will be rumor, you know, here and there that ah, do you know, even that other guy is is on the road there. Well, one day, that big prophet Samuel, he said that well, one day this guy is going to be king. No, no, no. She, so knew, the, she knew that he was going to be a king. She, yeah, she so the lady that. prophet had graph very well. He told him that. He told everything, calculated and. But I, 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 she's I, I, a wise I, I, woman. She's smart. A Nigerian woman herself, you know, she's a Nigerian. She's a smart. She's not Wowo. She's smart. She's because Nigerian, this husband that she's Nigerian. marrying is a not is a not job. So she decided to to settle herself. So she's good. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, I think she's a four one nine woman. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, there's no four one nine here. This, let's just say the truth. If somebody has worked for you so much, you had a big harvest. What stops you from packing? You know, a few things I say, ah, my no, brother, no, I, take I, I agree with that, but I don't think that that justifies now saying you want to kill them. Right. Remember, he's a, he's a marauder. That's his, his training. That was the business that he has but been you doing. Know, I'm, I'm not going to justify his marauding now. Huh? If he's a marauder, okay. I'm gonna, you know, I mean, you know, so... Uh, now we have entered philosophy. So so the, the, the full and has men, you justify them in Nigeria, do you? Uh, no, no, we know that the full and the men are being, a, you know, it's a yeah, manipulation. Yeah, that one is not normal. They are taking people's land, etc. So somebody, some people somewhere are doing something, pressing some button. So the full and the men is not this case. This case is that is that is how things were, you know, in that culture, in that setting. You know, you know, you want to make it, you kill somebody, collect what the person has, and keep, keep it pushing. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make it, you kill somebody. <laughs> I collect it. I keep it. I keep it pushing. That is the culture of the day. And oh, the wow. girl, she has been married to this neighbor for a long time. She knows that this man is a Jagadega man. There is no destiny. There is no future for her and her children in that house. She knows that. So she now saw how to she found opportunity to switch camp, and she executed it very marvelously. So she's a wise woman. She's smart. <laughs> I think David should be suspicious because. If a woman can switch like that to her husband, he can switch on you. He can do it to you now. Well, he because that's he the was special. Mm -hmm. Are you sure that? Are you sure that David was not hungry that time when this all this thing will happen? Are you sure that you, 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 <laughs> he and his men were not suffering from hunger? This girl brought correct food for him. <laughs> Stopped him from going to kill people. And you tell me, <laughs> you, are telling me that. <laughs> you know the stress and the energy Any that it takes to go and kill all these people plus the guilt. He saved him from all that. What are you talking about? This girl is solid. Leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, one of one of the two of you, either who's your mom or you, yeah, please pray for us so that we will we, 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 we will know the righteousness of God. Please. Amen. And not the righteousness of David. So why are we still saying that David is a man after God's heart? 
Well, we know that he's a blood-sucking demon and a crazy boy. Yeah, but you know, I mean, when it comes to God, maybe is a different evil man being. That's the thing. Okay, so you know, the what's the lesson of David? But some of the what psalms, is that? some of the psalms he wrote are terrible psalms too. Oh yes, I agree. Vengeful, very vengeful, very, you know, yes. Yes. Okay, who's going to pray for us? Father, we thank you for another session, uh, you know, uh, you know, of uh, Bible study. Uh, we have studied David today. Lord, please help us uh, <clears throat> take the good lesson in that uh, how we focus on you. And let our focus on you, on you uh, to, to, to affect how we live our everyday lives. And bless us all and draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Say to the mentors, you are the apple of God. You are God's the apple heart. of God's eye. Well, Listen, fast as you know, 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 you know,